So I've decided that as much as I love this very nice uh, cast iron flywheel, it's just too big and too heavy for the electromagnet engine. Now, I, this is my small selection of flywheels that I have. And I'm sure one of these mammoth ones, which is uh, made out of aluminium alloy, uh, would do fine because these are much, much lighter, but they just don't look right because they're such a smaller diameter. I think that the electromagnet engine, the style of it needs a larger diameter, this kind of size uh, flywheel. Now, I don't unfortunately have the ability to cast an aluminium at the moment. Uh, if I did, I'd simply use this as a pattern and make an aluminium version of that, which would probably be fine. But looking through my scrap metal box i did find this rather nice plate of uh, aluminium so i'm gonna have a go at making a flywheel out of this plate as you can see i've drawn a that's a four inch diameter circle that i've uh, drawn on there and i'm gonna have a rough cut that out using the bandsaw and then i'm going to use a technique that i saw my third boy use on one of his videos recently which is to use a wooden face plate on the lathe and then screw the piece of work that you want to turn to the wooden faceplate and he did that for the heatsink cooling rings on his replica b38 hot air engine and it worked out really well i never really thought of doing that so i've since i saw that i've made myself a wooden faceplate for my lathe and this will be the first time using it fingers crossed hopefully that will work out okay right let's get on with it so here's some bandsaw action Not exactly the fastest cutting thing in the world but it is it gets there in the end and it does like a really nice cut <clears throat> and in this configuration the older aldi metal cutting bandsaw just works superb i can't even remember the last time i used it in its conventional uh setup this just works so well so i'll go off, this is going to take a while so i'll go and finish this off camera and then we'll get on to the next stage which will be mounting it in the lathe here's your wooden faceplate already and here's the roughed out blank for the flywheel now to center it i've already got a hole i've drilled a hole on the jaw press in the center of the four inch circle so to center it i'm simply going to place it on here and use the rotating center like that to center it on the faceplate. And then I will simply uh, go around and these four convenient holes that are already drilled in the lump of aluminium actually, and I shall put screw wood screws in through there to hold the, nut, the, the aluminium plate to the wooden faceplate. So that's basically the setup. And again, all credit to my food boy for this. I'm literally stealing his idea. I first saw this on his channel. He used it to great effect, as I said, to make the cooling fins for his replica uh, Empire B38 hot air engine. So yeah, this is the plan. Um, and obviously the, the wooden face, it doesn't matter if it gets damaged during the process because you can just simply make another one. It's only a piece of wood after all, you know. So yeah, th this is the theory. Never, I've not actually used it before, so this is a first. So, you know, fingers crossed. I'm, I hopefully this is gonna work out okay. So we've got the aluminium plate screwed on to the wooden face plate. So we can now back this off. And there's our work. Right, now we're gonna have a go at turning. Now, this is a large diameter lump of aluminium, so I'm gonna use the standard equation for working out how fast to spin this. 
which is four times the cutting speed, which is surface feet per minute, which for aluminium is 250 over the work, in this case, the work diameter, which is four inches. So that means it's got to be run really slowly. And it's also an interrupted cut too. So we'll be spinning at about 250 RPM to do this. I've removed, I've had to remove the way guide guard that I normally have on my saddle, attached to the saddle. And this is because the, the wooden faceplate is seven inches in diameter and that's pretty much the maximum swing in my lathe. There's probably about an eighth of an inch clearance from this way down here. So, I, and with the way guard on the saddle, I just cannot get the saddle close enough to, 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 to do the machining. So this is the, uh, this is, this is what we've got. And, um, Let's give it a go. Right, so we're clear. Safety glasses on. Way too fast. down to 250. I'm standing in the light, so that's not good. Right, so that's about the right speed. Let's come in. Now I'm only taking small cuts because it is an interrupted cut. And we're just taking the edges off at the moment. But you get the idea. Okay, I'm going to keep nibbling away at this because it's going to take a long while because I've got to, you know, initially I shall just be taking small cuts, but you get the principle. And we'll come back when I'm, I'm nearer having it done. So I've certainly been nibbling away at it and we're definitely getting there. I thought I'd add the um, live center uh, just as a bit of extra support, really. It doesn't, I don't think it actually needs it, but uh, yeah, I mean, you just have to take it slowly and, and, it's, and it's, it's coming along. Let's get my safety glasses. Right. So, where are we? Yeah. yeah, just basically nibbling away at it. Not putting anything on since the last cut, so let's come out of that. So you get the idea.
So while it's still an interrupted cut, it's nowhere near as violent an interrupted cut as it was when we first started, as we are starting to get to a, a roundish shape. So I'll keep persevering with that and come back when we get to nearer, the, nearer it being done. Just got one little flat spot left now. The rest is all round. So probably got about a half a mil maybe left to take off. Maybe a millimetre. So yeah, slow but steady does it, basically. But we're getting there. Yeah, you can hear, still hear that one flat spot as the cutter moves across. But it's coming along very nicely. I do like this wooden faceplate idea. It's just so easy to attach the work to it. As I said, the, the, you know, the, it doesn't matter what you do to this because this is disposable. But um, yeah, we still got that very slight flat spot there, but yeah, it's coming along nicely. We're just about there. The flats are all gone. We are now cutting on the whole of the outer diameter. I'm on a tiny amount of cut, and this will be our, probably our last cut actually. <laughs> yep, pretty much it. Not bad at all. So there's our disc. It's come out quite nice. The next job will be to remove it and uh, hopefully I'll be able to hold it in um, uh, a proper chuck and or put a mandrel on it. But the next job really is to, uh, I think I need to bore a hole in the middle because I need to put a bush in there, which will be a press fit so that I've got the ability to actually lock it onto a shaft. But uh, yeah, it's coming along quite nicely. And there's certainly the wooden uh, faceplate idea of my for the boys has worked out superbly in this case. <laughs> 